Hey guys, it's Shin again from the Pendit, and today I'm in HSB and I'll be going over the Monteverde One Touch Tool Pen. As a pen, it's great, but for a fountain pen, I don't think so. Not because it doesn't write well or anything, or it's not, or not because it's not as comfortable as others, which I will go into, but because there's so much going on with this pen, it's just hard to focus on your writing. It has four scales on it or rulers. It has a spirit level as well as a screwdriver at the back that has Phillips as well has a flathead screwdriver and it also has a stylus. It's it's a lot but I'll go over it real quick. I'm gonna go from top to bottom, top to bottom about this pen. I'm gonna tell you everything that I know about it and then we're gonna go to the rank sample, all right? It's a nice cartridge converter pen that screws off. Now this cap is rather simple it has knurling on one side, but it's super tiny. You are gonna lose this if you write on a regular basis. It's it's okay if you're just sitting and writing in one place, but if this, as the ballpoint of the pencil would be, would be in the toolbox, you are definitely gonna lose it. That's why I don't feel this pen is great as a fountain pen. If you get the ballpoint of the pencil version of the One Touch Tool, that might work work much better for you. Anyways, the cap screws off, and then there's, on the hexagon of the barrel, there are four rulers and two sides that are blank. On one of the blank sides, there's a clip that's actually rather springy, and you can, like, almost pull it like that if it wasn't for the spirit level. Now, the spirit level doesn't shine, so you can't see anything from the back, but the inside is, like, kind of metal coated, so it light does reflect off. If you've ever had the original Game Boy or the Game Boy Color, this it's gonna remind you of that a lot. Now at the back of this pen is another part that kind of screws off and you get to meet a Phillips head screwdriver as well as a flat head screwdriver which can be rotated around. The thing screws back on and it, the good part about this is only screws in one orientation which is nice because it has something engraved on it. It says Monteverde USA One Touch Tool. Right above the knurling on that, there's, um, what do you call it? It's, it's a stylus. It's a, like, res not a resistive touch stylus. The, the normal stylus you would use for your iPhone or whatever. Overall, this pen is okay. You can't post it, like I said before, but I don't see a reason you'd want to. I don't think you'd want to use this for long rank sessions because the hexagon, pattern is pretty sharp, but it gets the job done for whatever you want. The nib is a standard number five nib, and when I say standard, I mean standard standard. It has, it's, it's, it's a nib that comes on almost every pen that has a standard number five nib, not exclusively Monteverde. It writes pretty well, it is completely interchangeable. You'd have better luck switching this out of the Twisby nib because Twisby has much better quality control than whoever the manufacturer of this nib is. But it writes okay, it's slightly scratchy. Now I'm gonna show you how to take this pen apart in the writing sample, which I'm gonna to go to right now. And when I say take apart, I mean take apart and refill. It only takes standard international short cartridges or the Monteverde mini converter or the, the Caveco squeeze mini converter, which I only have one of. It, I don't I don't like it as much. I would have liked to see a converter in this. I mean, it seems like there is enough space for a converter, but I don't know why they didn't include it. Anyways, to the, to the writing sample we go. Alrighty, everybody, this is the writing sample for the, oops, Monteverde One Touch Two Pen with a medium nib. This is only available in a medium nib. There's no fines, no broads, no extra fines, no double broads. So you're gonna have to get used to it. Or these nibs are standard, so you can like interchange them. This is, the ink right now is Parker Quink Black. It looks like this. And here it is against Monteverde Black as well as Sailor Black. It's not as saturated as Sailor Black and as much is a much truer black than Monteverde Black. Now to fill this pen, 
it's kind of weird. I hope you can see this. I hope I don't shake this too much. The egg, to see the nib, you have to exclude this part and you can see the nib. But if you actually want to fill ink in this, you have to just pull this out. Like just straight pull it out. It comes off pretty easily. If you do want to turn, I would say tighten the pen and then just pull it slowly. And that's how you take the pen apart. This right now is just a cartridge which I filled with Parker Clink. But you can also put in the short Montevideo converters or the Coveco squeeze converters. The nib can still be accessed through here. And you see that the nib perfectly aligns with a set of arrows, which is super useful. You don't want to put the nib in like this and squeeze because it might damage the nib. So what they ask you to do is they ask you to cover the nib up a little bit and then put it in. Now, I like to have it centered so that the clip is always on, on, on the side of the nib. And there's just one blank face on here. So what I do is I take this double-sided arrow and I push it just, just slightly, just not hard, not fast, just slow and steady. I just push it in and then it's secure. Now, it's still pretty easy to take this apart because it doesn't get tightened as much, All right? Now let's continue with this writing sample. Oops. So it's a pretty dry nib in general, and Parker Quink doesn't help that as much. But it 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 skips on it skips on me a little bit here in the start, but the start was maybe because I fiddled around with it. It's not a reliable writer, but if you just want something cool, this would look nice in your pen case. Let's try with some flex. It's, it's a steel nib, it's not gonna flex as much, but if you do flex it, it just lays down more ink. Same with this, it just lays down much more ink. On a wetness scale, it's not as wet as I would have liked, like you can see that. On the up and down stroke, it's much wetter, but still not my optimal wetness. Let's see how it does with the signature. I'm actually, to be honest, not very hopeful. Yep, not great. If you're a very slow writer, this might be good for you, but this whole, this part it skipped. It skipped all the way there. It skipped on me right there, over there, and that's not because the way I was holding the pen, it's just because the way the pen is. Like, if I just hold it, it's, it's okay. But if I just turn a little bit, if I go fast, the, the feet can't keep up. Like even here, if I go slowly, it, it's okay. If I go fast, you can see it's skipping right there. It's getting light over there. So not a great pen for signatures, but still pretty cool to have in a pen case. That was it for the writing sample. I will see you guys right now. Okay, guys, that's it for me for the Monteverde One Touch tool. I hope you like that. I'll see you guys next time. And until then, stay safe.